Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I become his hearing. A mudakara by Sheikh Muhammad Fawzi Al Karkari, Qaddas Allahu Sirrah, from April 10th, 2015. You should know, dear wayfarer, may God reconnect your branch to your own root, that during the last gathering we spoke about the station of vision with regard to the holy tradition or the Hadith Qudsi, in which God says, I become the vision with which he sees. In this gathering, we will speak about the station of hearing with respect to the perfected or completed servant, Al-Abdul Kamil, whose spiritual nature has mounted his bodily nature. So we say, with the grace of God, that hearing has three physical levels, as well as other divisions at the levels of the spiritual realm, Al-Malakut, and at the level of the realm of invincibility, Al-Jabarut. The first level is simply to sense sound without understanding it. You hear a sound, but do not comprehend its meaning. God says, deaf, dumb, and blind, summun bukmun umyun, they do not understand. Surah Al-Baqarah. Here he likens the unbelievers to dumb beasts due to the, how they hear but do not understand what they hear. Uh, for instance, when a shepherd is herding his flock and he commands them to go in a certain direction or to return in a certain direction, they do so even though they do not understand any of the shepherd's words. Rather, they move out of habit. This level of hearing is common to both the unbeliever on the one hand and the beast on the other. The second level of auditory sense perception is to hear something and understand it. God says, Do you hope then that they will believe you, seeing that a party of them would hear the word of God and then distort it after they had understood it knowingly? Surah Al-Baqarah Such people hear the rulings and understand them, but then change them. This verse was revealed with respect to the 70 men who were with Sayyiduna Musa, with Moses salam, and how they changed and corrupted the commandments of God that were issued to them. The third level of auditory sense perception is to hear with understanding and to emulate. God says, Only they are believers whose hearts quake with fear when God is mentioned, and when his verses are recited unto them, they increase them in faith and they trust in their Lord. Surah Al-Anfal Here the believer hears the word of God, and his or her heart is fearful, and it increases in faith. When such believers invoke God, they are necessarily fearful. Thus, they listen with presence of heart and ponder what they hear and as a result of that presence and that pondering and that pres- that fear they trust in God because the real or God has settled in their hearts such that their hearts have become the throne of the name of God, Allah. This is why trust, which comes at the end of this verse, tawakkul, is the highest station of wayfaring because it arises from the reality of divine unity. The Noble Qur'an furthermore distinguishes between hearing, sama, listening, istima, inclining, isra, and listening attentively, insat. It speaks of inadvertently hearing something without any intention on one's part, such as when you are in the market or in a gathering and you hear false or idle chatter. Now you have a choice. Do you sit or do you turn away? God says, And when they hear idle chatter, they turn away therefrom and say, Unto us are our deeds, and unto you your deeds. Peace be upon you, we do not seek out the ignorant. Surah Al-Qasas As for listening, istima, it is an intentional act because of one's immersion in hearing and discerning the meaning. God says, 
remember when a group of jinn inclined to the listening to the Quran. Surah Al-Ahqaf. Sa'id ibn Jubair, commenting on this verse, said, When the Prophet ﷺ was sent forth, the heavens were placed on guard and Satan said, These guards must have been set because something significant has happened on earth. So he, Satan, sent forth his troops through the earth and they found the Prophet ﷺ standing in prayer at dawn with his companions by a palm tree reciting the Qur'an. They listened until he had finished, and then, the verse reads, they went back to their people as warners. They said, O people of ours, truly we have heard a book sent down after Moses, confirming that which came before it, guiding to the truth and to a straight path. This report, commenting on the verse, is an evidence that listening, istima, occurs intentionally on the part of the listener. As for inclining, isra, inclining towards the speaker, that is, this is a level where concentration of hearing is combined with the reaction of the heart and with emotions. God says, if you both repent unto God, for your hearts did certainly incline. Surah Al-Tahrim. Here, inclining is followed by none other than the application of what was said. If you listen indifferently without being moved to act, this means that your heart is veiled from what you hear. For if the light of the speech entered your heart, your body would be stirred in service of it. So that's inclining. As for listening attentively, in sought, this is the highest level of hearing, the level that attracts divine mercy. God says, And when the Qur'an is recited, hearken unto it and listen attentively that happily you may receive mercy. Ansitu. Thus, attentive listening is to listen along with the ability to read the meanings, wisdoms, and secrets that lie beyond the words and letters. Such is the state with regard to the invoker. The circle of attentive listening must be made whole within him so that the divine mercies may descend upon him. This means to invoke with the tongue while understanding what one says so that one's hearing receives it and it enters the heart and so on, circling repeatedly between the tongue, the hearing and the heart. In more than one verse of his holy book, God mentions the faculty of hearing before the faculty of seeing, because it is the faculty that never stops working and never sleeps, in contrast to vision. God says, So we placed a veil over their ears in the cave for a number of years. Darabna ala adhanihim. The meaning of this veiling is that God nullified their hearing and prevented them from hearing what was around them so that they fell asleep for that long time that God had willed for them. This implies that the faculty of hearing usually does not sleep, which speaks to its greatness. Thus, God has instituted many norms for the circle of hearing. For instance, if sound rises above the capacity of the ear, the human being loses the faculty of hearing and this affects the entirety of his body. God says, It was but a single cry, Sayhatan wahida, then behold, they were extinguished. Surah Yasin. Thus, the hearing faculty is like an organ that fulfills its function in the here below. The fetus in the womb of the mother begins to hear the beats of its mother's heart in the fifth month, and when it is born, its hearing faculty is fully mature. This is why the Sunnah recommends giving the call to prayer, the Adhan, as well as the Iqama, in the ears of the newborn. As for the faculty of sight, it is only completed when the baby reaches seven months. As it were, the faculty of sight is only complete 
when the disciple completes the seven readings of the levels of the divine name. When a human being is drugged or lacks oxygen, he loses the faculty of sight before losing the faculty of hearing. So just as sight delays in its development for the newborn, the novice spiritual traveler needs time to develop his or her inner vision to read the seven readings of the divine name Allah. All of these virtues that we've mentioned bring the circle of hearing to completion such that it comprises 360 complete degrees meaning that the human being can hear from all directions in contrast to seeing which he only takes from 145 or 180 degrees in the physical realm. However, in the spiritual realm, the circle of vision, like the circle of hearing, is also complete. So the eye only perceives, let's say, 45 degrees in the external realm, but the disciple's inner vision can potentially perceive the entirety of the hidden alif, as it moves from the ha to the lam to the lam through the gap and to the alif. So outward vision, which comes from the external realm in the form of light that is deciphered by the brain and grants you the ability to see 145 degrees from each angle, in contrast, or to perceive 45 degrees from each angle, in contrast to inner vision, where light comes from within the ha, wherein is the hidden alif, and it settles in your heart. For the innermost secret of the name is read in the presence of the heart, and its beginning stage is seeing spiritual illusions. Then you enter into the ha, and it gives you a widening that resembles the outward vision of the eye. This is why the disciple is able to count the directions in the spiritual realm even though there are only two directions therein. For even in the ha center of the hidden alif of the divine name, the lam alif in Arabic is written like an X. As such, you learn annihilation or fana through the lam of negation by removing all things from your heart. The lam of negation is la and it looks like an X and through it you learn to remove all things from your heart and to witness the real alone. Then, when you see the light, you bring it back from the spiritual realm to the physical realm, and from the center you come to see the light from all directions. Therefore, when you fare by virtue of the light of the verse, God guide us upon the straight path, اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ from Surah Al-Fatiha, which is the line that is drawn by God's Messenger وسلم, in the sand with respect to following the Noble Law outwardly and inwardly, then you will only have two directions because the illusory straight line divides the circle of the Ha of the Divine Name into two halves. You see 180 degrees from the higher side of the noble tree and 180 degrees from the lower side of the shade and thus the circle of your vision inwardly becomes complete and the forms are negated for you by virtue of the rising of your spiritual aspiration above the here and the hereafter. As for the circle of hearing, it is completed outwardly and inwardly at once such that you hear from all directions. It possesses 360 complete degrees. Outward physical hearing of the one who invokes his Lord and others is identical. When vibrations from the outside are detected by the eardrum, they reach the brain that decodes them. Inner hearing, however, perceives the levels of the name and covers the entirety of the circular surface of the Ha. When the luminous hearing of the spiritual traveler unites with the physical hearing of that traveler by virtue of the invocation of the singular name, 
then he hears through God's hearing. Sartu sam'ahu alladhi yasma'u bihi. I become his hearing with which he hears. Thus, inner hearing becomes strengthened for the disciple when the light of his heart is unified with the hearing faculty in the sense of the hadith of the beloved alayhi salatu salam who would supplicate on his way to the mosque and would say, Dear God, place light in my heart and light in my hearing. Nuran fi sam'i. When you attain this state by virtue of following and acting upon what you hear, your hearing radiates with the light of I become his hearing by which he hears. And you hear the disembodied or the spiritual voices, al-hawatif. You hear innermost secrets and the glorification of creatures. And all of this is by way of your outward ear because the light of your heart flows to your ear so that when you hear it internally, you are certain that it comes from your heart because you hear it from a single direction. However, if you hear this hatif or this disembodied voice from outside and you are certain of it, but you are not sure where you heard it from, at that point you will have heard it from two directions. This is because the circle of your hearing widens until it attains to a high level, and that is by bringing the two upper levels down to the physical realm. Wherever you turn after that with the light of your faith, you hear the glorification of creatures, the tasbih, al-makhluqat. You should also know that the door of inner hearing will not open up for you until outwardly you begin to hear the words of your spiritual guide and to follow them. As for the one who hears them and turns away, he has no share in this respect. This is well attested to in the prophetic biography. It is related in the authenticated reports that Sayyiduna Abu Bakr, Umar and Uthman, may God be pleased with them, all used to hear the glorifications of food in the Prophet's noble hand. It is also transmitted in the authenticated reports that Sayyiduna Imran ibn Husayn, may God be pleased with him, used to hear the greetings of peace of the angels. There are many similar instances in the books about the Prophet's life concerning the states of the companions. May God be pleased with them. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد إنك حميد مجيد